In this video, we'll be using Pasco's complete rotational system uh, to find the moment of inertia of the ring and discs that are a part of the set. Um, so for this, we'll be using the uh, smart timer to track the acceleration of the uh, super pulley. Um, and then we have a mass and hanger set here um, that will create the uh, acceleration for us. So to start this off, it's difficult to see, but I have a string attached to this pulley right here. Um, the best way to do this is just to thread it up, thread the uh, string through the hole, and then tie uh, many knots uh, to make a little ball, and that'll uh, keep it inside the pulley. Um, make sure for this experiment we're using, well, for this for this particular setup, we're using the uh, first pulley, the smallest. Um, there's three. There's the largest, the middle, and the smallest. Um, we'll be using the smallest. So I already have string tied on here. Uh, the next piece we'll need is this mounting post that'll allow us to mount our uh, photo gate and super pulley together. Um, so we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side for now. Um, we have our photo gate here and we're going to attach it to the rod here and then thread on the super pulley. Make sure it's flat. There we go. All right, there we go. So this is what it should look like. And then we're going to put it in the post here and make sure that the um, pulley is up um, as opposed to um, this direction here. We'll go ahead and slip this in. We will uh, we'll keep this loose and we'll uh, get this out as far as we can um, over the edge here. And then we'll use our thumb screw to tighten it in place. This is just a rough setting for it. And so what we'll do here We'll wind up the string just to check the position, make sure that the um, that the uh, shaft of the uh, pulley is parallel um, with the tangent line on the pulley here. And uh, that looks pretty good. We'll probably just adjust it a little bit this way. And make sure, nope. Make sure that the uh, rod is not touching the uh, base here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So next, we'll go ahead and connect the photo gate to the smart timer. Make sure we plug it into port one. And that should keep the uh, plug out of the way. All right. Next thing we're going to do is just going to grab a mass and we'll just put some mass on it. We don't need a bunch. And we're going to take our string here and we're going to wrap it a few times. We're going to give it some tension there. There we go. Um, so now we're going to place the disc on. Um, you'll notice it's a D-shaped hole. The top of the uh, shaft here is a D-shaped hole, so just line that up. And the uh, top of the shaft should be flush, or really close to flush with the uh, um, top of the disc here. So now we can take this mass and we can uh, suspend it over here. And it's enough to not make it move. 
All right. So with that, move on to the next step and um, actually uh, collect some data here. Go. All right. Turn our smart timer on here. Okay, so you notice I already have some values populated in here. Um, I already measured the mass of the ring and the disc separately and recorded them here. And I already measured the radius of both the ring and disc, um, just the radius of the disc, and then the internal and external radius of the uh, ring. Um, and then I also I measured the diameter of the uh, the pulley right here that's on the uh, rotating platform, and then also the diameter of the uh, super pulley here. So once you have those, then you can actually start and uh, performing the experiment. So to start this off, the first thing we need to do is there's some friction um, in this bearing here. So when we're actually running the experiment, we wanna find the mass required to overcome this friction force so that the only thing that's accelerating um, uh, is just the uh, these pieces here. Um, so to start off, we're just going to use the disk. And what we're going to do is we're going to add masses on here until, I'm just going to come on the other side. We're going to add masses until this starts rotating at a constant velocity. So no acceleration. Whoops, I'll tie this up again. So 100 grams is not going to do it. The way you test this is to just give it a little push. And if it stops, you need to add more mass. Give it a little push. And if it appears to keep rotating at a constant velocity, which it appears to be doing right here, really close to constant. Okay. All right. Now what we'll do is we'll take this mass that we have here and we're going to measure it on a scale that I have over here. Comes out to 125 grams exactly. And so that's our friction mass. Whoops. We're out. This is in kilograms. All right. So that's the amount of uh, mass required to overcome just the friction in the bearing here for this particular unit. It's, it's going to vary based on how old it is and how old this bearing is. This unit's particularly old. Um, so it requires a little bit more. So now that we have that accounted for, we can just place a mass on here um, that will cause this to accelerate. So we'll just do, we'll do 200 grams here. And just like before. Wrap this around several times. And then we'll suspend it. You can wrap it up a little bit too. So now on the smart timer, we want to measure the angular acceleration of the, um, uh, actually, you know what, my apologies. Forgot to uh, gotta measure the mass of this. That's 204.9. 
And so what that'll do is this is the effective mass. So it's the difference between the hanging and the friction. And this is the mass that we're using in our calculation, which is further over on the spreadsheet here. So now we'll go back and put the mass hanger on here. So now on the smart timer, we're going to select our measurement. We're going to go down to acceleration, just right here. And we want to do the angular pulley, which will give us a value in radians per second. All right. And then so before we hit start, I actually, I like to let the um, uh, disc rotate and actually gather some speed first before recording. Because the way this works is it's going to, um, once you hit start, it's going to read several uh, windows in the uh, pulley and then calculate the acceleration based off that. Um, so I want to have some movement already before we start. We're not going to let it go all the way down that it can. All right, so we'll release it. And then, uh, okay, now we'll hit start. And so it gives us a value of uh, 0.34. We'll wind it back up and we'll set it off to the side here. Typically you wanna do an average and uh, do several runs of this to get a good average, but just for the sake of video, we'll just run with the first one we get. Um, so we'll enter that value here, 0.34 radians per second. Whoops, 0.34. And uh, what this will do for us, since we found the angular acceleration of the pulley, we can then find the translational um, by uh, multiplying the radius um, by the uh, angular. And then since we know the translational um, velocity of the string, we can apply that to the platform to get the angular acceleration of the platform here, um, which is found right here. And then that'll calculate out um, the tension in the string. And then with that tension, we can calculate the torque um, that is on the base right here. And we'll, uh, with the torque known and the angular acceleration, so using this value and this value, um, we can actually find uh, the experimental moment of inertia, uh, which comes out to a 0 0.006 this way, um, which is which is somewhat close, um, at least closer than I had done in prior uh, prior um, experiments where I was getting very bad values. Um, some things we have to look at here: um, friction is obviously still going to be at play here a little bit; it isn't perfectly accounted for. Um, and now, when you go and finish the experiment, you're doing the same exact process. So we will place the uh, ring on here. And then once again, we will take these masses off. The ring on here. We'll do the same process to find the friction mass for the ring and disc combination. Okay, a little more. that actually mm, go a little less Give it a push and observe. We're just looking for that this is rotating at a constant velocity here. And it's accelerating a little bit. Let's take off the five gram. And let's make sure we got that ring relatively centered there. All right.
All right, a little less. Tap. Okay, it's close enough. It's important to take your time on this particular step because um, this is what's really going to determine um, how precise your measurement is. So we'll go ahead and remove this now. And we'll measure the mass. It's 160 grams. And we'll enter that right here. And then go through and do the same exact process um, for the ring and disc combination. And then after you find that, um, the spreadsheet that I have set up here will then calculate the ring by subtracting um, the ring and disc from, or sorry, the disc from the ring and disc um, to get your values. Um, hope you found this video useful. Um, let me know.